let's talk about the Deep Carbon Observatory remastered by Patrick Stewart and Scrap Princess. This is from 2020, it's a remastering of this original adventure. Words by Patrick and the art is by Scrap. Um, the ideas are by both. The maps are by Dirk Detweiler Lighty, which is a replacement of the maps in the original. I suppose a very brief thing is just to set start because I'm not going to talk about it more is the art style is divisive. Some people love Scraps art, some people hate it. I like it, I like expressionism. I, I think the criticism that says it's technically inept or bad is is wrong, um, but I think it's reasonable to talk about aesthetic and emotional weight for things. But I like it, um, and I think there's some very good art in here. The basic idea of this adventure is a prehistoric dam has, has broken and water is poured out and so there's a flooded lower valley and a kind of empty upper valley which now exposes ancient structures ripe for exploration, including the eponymous Deep Carbon Observatory. There's no set levels, but the recommended level is 35th. And uh, and it says, oh, you know, first level party could do this, but 35th is about right. And that is probably about right, maybe at the upper end, the rival party that you have to deal with are 5th level. There are roughly, uh, so I should say the difference is, is, is massively, uh, there's the new maps. So it goes from these very simple maps. So that, that is a map in the original of the Deep Carbon Observatory. Whilst in the new, let's see if I can uh, get the map of the observatory up. And we'll see this as we go through, obviously, but just to quickly say that is the map in the new. Very different styles, much more detailed, meant to be clearer. There's also massive layout changes. This is just words in, in rough paragraphing, little bold, tiny use of bold text, uh, not much other layout stuff going on, a few tables. Here, this is heavily layout oriented with a lot of work put into that. Uh, there's also been playtesting between the two, so the statting is more exhaustive and sufficient. What the writing in general is sharper. On the whole, it's a vast improvement. I don't think there's any reason to go back to the original, really. I think there might be one or two tiny content changes. So there's four or five major segments of the adventure. Carrowmore, which is the starting town, the, the flooded valley, and then the dam, and the profundal zone above the dam. That's kind of two or three segments, depending on how you see it. And then the deep carbon observatory. Now, approaching Carrowmore and the town itself is less a normal adventure, though in practice you'll end up you know, turning it into whatever you need it to, but it's more a, a, a flow chart. It starts, you, the adventure starts by giving you a bunch of hooks you can pick, you can roll for, and then it gives you some intro stuff, describing the flooded environment, opening it up. There's, uh, this is not a rival party. Uh, the eagles are not the rival party. And the flood, you can see it's a literal flow chart. It's not just a flow chart invention in terms of here's some scenes, it is a literal flow chart where you can go to certain things based on what's happened you know you can randomize what's next or you can choose what's next and give well i think it's really that you give the players the option of the things that flow on and this gives them information hooks allies things like that it's you know the next two spreads are about this they give details of everything including children you can help cannibal conspiracy uh people who might come and help you like the uh, bishop of the optical god or theodore brosen might come and help you uh, all these kinds of different things that I meant to set up the adventure and give you a fairly managed way of getting the players out into the uh, the valley from this disaster zone. So they go through this and then to find out more they're going to have to continue on, basically. Then you get, and I think you get two sections of NPCs now. You get the crows, the real rival party, who, end, who start by killing the apparent rival party. Uh, and you also get the golems, these weird dice-headed, like polyhedral-headed creatures who are part connected to the dam and are part of its system in a way that like I think they're part of its lock system but anyway it's probably not it's not entirely clear if this is the right section for it and there it does highlight an issue where there's no summary lists of these things uh, you have layout improvements via extension uh, but no intensiveness you know extensivity rather than intensivity and really you want both uh, but nonetheless the crows are great the crows are awful uh, the crows survive the there are four crows there's the by frozen twins and there's a who are i think more or less holock is a fighter and echo is a thief and then you've got 
a sorcerer and or a necromancer and you've got a dwarf sniper and these guys are terrible my pcs hated them when we ran this uh, they're very clever they're kind of tucker's kobolds in that way they're intended to be a genuinely clever match for the players and uh, they just keep coming so you can see they're fully statted with um, all their abilities they have uh, importantly so that's gar sniping including his poisons um, and i think i've just missed uh, but there is a list of their tactics here uh, a detailed list of their tactics things they do different ploys they might undertake ways of annoying players and pursuing them harrying them as they go to the deep carbon observatory where the crows also want to go the crows are great they're very strong maybe less strong uh, in my view is the golems who are you know there's six pages with really stats detail heavy without much writing attached to them uh, you can see you know nice art uh, and the basic stats and stuff you need and some behaviors they might be undertaking and blah blah uh, which is the behavior tables are great that's always a good idea i think in these cases but uh, they are perhaps less exciting they're kind of weird and strange and sad and that's a good mood i think for this kind of this dnd adventure particularly but dnd in general can thrive off that but nonetheless they are perhaps less interesting than the crows you then get to this is the wilderness map here this is the lower valley there's the dam uh, you've got caramel there and there's the upper valley and the deep carbon observatory and this is all um the perfectly readable map this does not have the scale on it the scale is on the smaller sub maps that's annoying but not a big problem just weird this is part of maybe the thing i've already said where you get a weird sense with the layout is very good and clear but information control is maybe lacking at points you have this wilderness map uh with a kind of yeah as i said the overview and then a net overview of the different sections you know 20 set which are in the pdf hyperlinked which is good it has this section on the on a, the race this is not a real race it says this is the idea that there are lots of factions who want to get to the uh to the dco basically and you can fake a race i didn't fake a race i think i did time stuff and think about stuff a bit more in that way uh but yeah it's this is at least aiming for gameplay it's aiming to help dms run something and get some sense you know get this is a way you could get your your players thinking this matters i think time records help with that in my view then there's this more detailed lower map uh, so this is kind of there, there are two of this there's this and there's the upper level and these are both i think quite clear maps you've got uh these are water depth charts and um a a side view of water depths and other things this is really good and i found that really helpful this is stuff lacking in the original i think or at least not entirely there in the original and i think for something which so heavily relies on environmentals like your players have to either sail there or walk there they have to get through places there are places that are more or less submerged i think paying attention to how wilderness is difficult or not and particularly when you're like there's no possible water uh, the game is going to be scarce in most places because of the nature of the disaster it was farmland now it's flooded um i think that's it's necessary for adventures to give you that backup and i think this does give you good backup for that uh, it you know it gives general this is the general wilderness rules about it aren't they uh, there is the encounters the encounters are fine i like carl capek the leader of these salamander men uh, who unlike the other salamander men who come from above the dam and are wandering around he's lost but he uh, he's intelligent and says things like must nature always be asked to straighten out the mess that man has made uh, the capex is going to be relevant later and so this is a factional thing as well that you don't know it yet i think that's great uh, but a lot of those encounters are golems solid encounters and certainly brings in the crows fairly regularly which will infuriate your players uh, but that's just there i'm going to look at this one spread I won't, i'm not obviously going to go through all the spreads uh, for the locales but this is i think a good example of how rich the lower valley is the lower valley i think is the stronger of the two wilderness sections and it's really strong uh, this you could just steal stuff from this anyway this is in that sense a mineable resource 
And I think this is all very clear as well on the whole. You have a submap of this area, Carrowmore to the church. There's Carrowmore more or less there, up to the, the church and toads. And you've got a couple of other things going on. There's this. So the, the other encounters on this spread are sarcophagus and fool's duel. So here you have uh, wizard rival wizards fighting on a submerged bridge um, who want your help. Uh, you have a sarcophagus with a lawful good mummy who knows about what some of some of the background of what's going on has a magical weapon um, can help but you how do you communicate with him you know and then you have the church and toads which is a church that kind of as things have crumbled or slipped over surrounded by toads that have eaten loads of corpses and inside the church is uh, the sacred way from the bible of the optical god like these sacred documents which will help you against undead later on because the cult of the optical god is obviously in some way been connected to the almost pharaonic sun worship and and sort of the good armies that uh, end up building the dam and dealing with the uh, the screwed up stuff beyond the evil humans and what are basically dark elves drow those are all really rich um as you can run an adventure just doing that that is a, a session or two depending on how your sessions generally run and work i think that's great i'm really impressed by that and i think the layout really aids that and this is thing patrick is a is a great writer um you know great thinker great writer in terms of what's good at the table so i will give uh, yeah maybe uh, maybe one more 45 minutes let's go to 45 is that it yeah pon the golem oh that's pon the crom isn't it pon the golem here very good. This is it. Just to keep it quick. Golden boat, massive treasure trove. Obviously, if you can get it down river, that's a challenge in itself. But yeah, Ponagolem is this weird uh, village of the dam sort of thing where um, a witch is floating underneath the water, and everyone apart from children forget her if they see her. But she's taking over people's minds, and everyone has to live because of the flood. They all have to live. She was in the well, you see. Everyone has to live on their roofs, and so there's this kind of every, everyone's getting sucked into this cult of the witch, but no like body snatcher style in a sense. Uh, or brainwash, you know, some some brainwash kind of horror, and only the kids know, and they need your help, uh, and it's just very creepy. And the witch in the water is a really, really quite good um, antagonist in this. Uh, and you see fully staffed there. Not, I mean, two hit dice. That's not amazing. But if you can't remember she exists, you have a problem. Uh, you can see uh, there's also a thing about people beginning to weep their own blood when they see her. That's a theme. The weird screwed up undead stuff related to this whatever evil forces have been imprisoned beyond the dam by an ancient empire uh, that you know that that's part of it. it's not really body horror uh, i i guess but the a sort of creepy um esoteric and supernatural horror thing going on in that which was very very enjoyable um, and very very evocative too the dam comes next and is a dungeon basically it's not a massive dungeon it's got two sections you can see uh, and there's a, a tiny amount of kind of this room connects to this but really it's a very simple dungeon on the whole that requires some intelligence to make sure you access properly that's it this is full of creepy weird stuff with the eye bleeding material uh, so you know i guess that's the uh, probably the the summary i'd give of that uh, that it's uh, it's it's solid it's fun it's off the two dungeons it's much smaller than the deep carbon observatory and uh, it's it gives a lot of insight into the background of things and i know my players enjoy trying to piece together things it's evocative as well if you have a bunch of um brainwashed cannibals and weird undead servitors or allies of the witch attacking people in a room if you can have the race work like that which i did you know that was the, the because I, I was like oh they probably caught up by now um that's good uh, but it's it's less impressive than the DCO. The upper wilderness, the profundal zone, uh, is I think is probably I would say less exciting. Um, there's less in it. You can see this is roughly it here. There is less in it. There is less going on uh, comparatively. It is this kind of weird, almost uh, you know that Tintin where there's. I think this radiation makes an island have loads of weird stuff like plants on it. But it's basically that, this weird landscape that looks very cool, has confusing technology or something. Who knows what's going on with how uh, 
this the valley and the deep carbon observatory used to work but it's basically like that it's uh it looks cool but there's not very much there there are these bridges a brown bridge which is a dead eagle a white bridge which is a mound of fish and crabs which is the body of an enormous pike that's got stuck and a black bridge which is a real bridge so creepy stuff but not necessarily i mean it's gameable but it's not as evocatively gameable with dynamics in it as some of the other stuff but the, this is the thing i think yeah we're, we're getting there is that that it? yeah the golden homes and the the pile hives the big thing here is that the, the factions that are up here so not the kind of different adventuring factions and the cannibals who are already chasing you or are allied with you by this point and the crows but these two native factions the reed people who are live on kind of reed boat cities or boat a boat town chiefly and then um, the capex the salamander people and they're enemies and things have gone wrong and now their tensions have come to a head and you can get involved in it you can make peace with them you can side with one group or the other and here you've got the golden homes which is again lawful undead the ancients of the like the, the dead chiefs these piratized sunken ships uh, with crystalline zombie people who will can come and help you in this battle at uh, the piled hives is where this place here which is where these human reed people live uh, who are i guess some of the descendants of the original cultures and they they need your help if they're going to defend uh, versus the newts then newts not salamander people uh, but yeah you can see tactics different attacks that the capex will make and um the battles they'll have including carl capex if he lives you know presumably if you don't meet him he finds his way home this was really memorable as an experience for my players we really enjoyed it and i think um is uh, yeah is it is again it's a very different experience you know you can do it as a mass combat essentially very different experience to the other experiences so far so this is also an adventure module and it's not a short one i grant it's not like a meant to be three sessions play but it's an adventure module which has a variety of landscapes and types of adventure within it you know there there are there's the sort of fairly managed uh, dramatic scene based almost caramel stuff at the start there's then a wilderness exploration technically above and below the dam but chiefly below the dam in terms of what's exciting and interesting above the dam generally my players did this and i think most people will you're just pushing on to see what else there is and try to get to the end of that section and then you've got the dam this mini dungeon with kind of like oh this is the background and now you have oh by the way something you can do and it could benefit you is taking part in a war or at least a battle and then we have the deep carbon observatory the pit so the dco itself this is the cartilaginous giant who does not sleep uh, the observatory itself is a sprawling dungeon again it's got extensive layout decisions which is easy to read but hard to sum up uh, could do with some sort of you might need crib sheets it's not so much a highlight job um, most of the time but a crib sheet thing to say these things connect this is the list of things you can do while that happen this is how this connects to this basically that's i think what i'd say this is an ancient human construction that, that allows you to look down into and access the underdark and this connects to these kinds of weird drow like creatures who i don't know if they are really meant to be the same as patrick's elfidal patrick and scraps elfidal from veins of the earth or not but there's a similar kind of el really eldritch weird drow thing going on which if you've listened to my um, particularly my d3 review um that's really so much there's so much weird eldritch feel to those early gygaxian drow before they become um still i think interesting but much more mainstreamized drizzedized in the forgotten realms uh, the the greenwood salvatore take is very different to the gygax take and this is very much on the gygax end of trying to be weird uh, but yeah you can see that it's kind of an interesting environment all kinds of different rooms you can see uh, here that there's the observatory there is um, a chain elevator to get down to the underdark and you can see uh yeah all kind of, it there is looping within that soft looping uh, but you've got if you look here you've got a loop within here you can come down here you can loop around to there uh, loop down or around there you can loop down here across here um, and there are some ability you can loop from out of some of these as well as well as a loop within this so there are a lot of 
looping options without it necessarily being fully jaquayed or anything. There's one entrance in. Uh, the sort of main routes you're going to go are fairly clear. Uh, but some of the n ways to get round are are fairly rich and, and distinct, distinct from each other. At this point, you might have lots of factions. And I, there's obviously, Patrick does say here that he keeps it quiet and inactive in order to build tension, which is meant to be, uh, you know, for silent and mysterious exploration, followed by shock when the giant is chasing them. That's how he did it. I, I will actually go back to the giant. There's another creepy picture of the giant. You know, he does not sleep, but he dreams, motionless for several hundred years, caked in dust, he lies naked on the floor, his skin the temperature of stone, his nearly sightless half-closed eyes like weeping pearls, his great heart beating quarter of the hour. Uh, that's Patrick's writing. It is Baroque, um, maybe not even Baroque, maybe more uh, decadent aesthetic movement, but uh, it's something. It's, it's very, I, I really love it, and I think it is part of what makes all of his stuff, I've reviewed Silent Titans here before, but this particularly so redolent. But yeah, he did it that way. But he says, look, there's all these factions, you might want to have them mashed together. I did that. I did the mash together. Finale, chaotic finale. So, I'm not going to go through all of it you know, in detail, obviously. It's uniformly pretty good. Um, some of the mechanical puzzles, some of the dynamics, what things actually are, sometimes took me a couple of reads. Um, that's partly the cost of a rich writing style, a non-technical writing style. Partly, even Dirk's maps, and I like Dirk, he also does the Silent Titans maps. Um, his maps are good, um, but uh, very occasionally I have to look at them a couple of times to know, oh, that is meant, that's a passage to there. Here's an example here that without that A marker, it's not clear those connect, but they do, as an example. Um, so the mixture of those things does mean occasionally I'm like, okay, what's going on here? I have to read a few times. But it wasn't that bad. I've read much worse adventures. But again, there's a crib sheet perhaps element that some people will go for. It has some really rich things going on in it though. So I will uh, just look at one. Uh, let's, what's this the one I was thinking about? Um, just a few examples, yeah. 34 here. No, just the first one, yeah. The Folgerium, this room is like a slice taken from an upturned ziggurat. And then you've got these statues, calcite statues, uh, and there are different command words which you can find as you explore uh, the Deep Carbon Observatory. So if you want to access this way, basically, because you have to come down here, so to get back up to there, you'd have to go there. Um, you have an op option as well if you can make your way up into slave observation of climbing around the side. Uh, but yeah, basically to get through to this section, uh, which is a kind of weird, cool, not weird in terms of its layout, but has cool secrets in it, you're going to have to work out the puzzle or fight the statues. Uh, that's good. And the fact is, you know, again, it's, it's redolent. It's interesting. Upturned ziggurat, naked human calcite statues. That's uh, Im imagistically powerful. And the Nightingale Hall over here with this um, machinery, the gear, the gearing and band for the chain that is going down to the uh, to the underdark and then the gravity knife here which is a you know creepy blade thing underneath the trap door uh, that's all you can just immediately get that that's fun that's cool people are going to enjoy that and uh, players are going to go away thinking man that was a really distinctive place it's not just another set of caves and um, this one of the things you buy adventures for is stuff that you couldn't just come up with on your own by thinking hard enough about something cool. For me, that's the case anyway. I know people take different views, but certainly things I couldn't come up with on my own. That's a big part of it. Ooze engines, hidden treasures, um, armory, stratification halls, and then uh, there's the machinery of the observatory and there's a few there's various different kind of alienish things which are quite fun you know where you've got to uh, you can talk with different uh, mostly friendly in that case kind of aliens uh, and then yeah this is off to that's i think the secret area off to the uh, left beyond the statues not secret guarded uh, including zernibuch ambassador of slime so you could become friends with this thing you can become allies the vault lots of different yeah this is one thing i think this is a a patrick thing is <laughs> it, not necessarily long but very rich weird treasures and i love that that's an inspiration to me to write good treasures that players like wow that was a cool thing to find 
so I think that's the, I guess my, my summary of it uh, would be what I've said already is you're going to need to crib probably. It requires a lot of back and forth. The lack of intensive layout decisions, so it's extensive, really good, big, clear pages, clear maps on the whole, um, good text, uh, every, stats are clear, things like that. Stuff that is good that um, by extending in space, but you sometimes need an intensification of information and this lacks that, so you're still going to have to crib. The actual ideas and images, well look, if what I've described to you is awful and you hate, you're not going to like this adventure. But if you, like me, find that particularly evocative and you think, man, I can't wait to get players in contact with that, then this is a good adventure for you. I think it lends itself to m not just memorable moments, because I mean, you need your scenes as well as your moments, but it lends itself to a, a kind of an experience where you have a party exploring the sunken, ruined valley, coming up, finding information with things, getting hints about what's coming ahead, seeing a golem, what's going on in the village why why is there this mummy that sort of thing uh, why are there these little newt guys getting to the um getting to the the dam finding out more climbing your way up into an alien landscape and then finding your way into the dco where everything is strange and over the top baroque certainly in this case and then you can have everything come together and i'll, I'll give a story of what happened at the end of our adventure there in a minute but uh I think it's very good at that. It's, it, and on the whole, it lends itself to being understood like that and being run like that. And so your players will have the scenes that then lead to the dramatic, worthwhile, cathartic moments. Uh, there's nothing boring, basically. There's nothing in it that you're like, man, that sucks. Uh, it's not always conceptually dense in the Brycean sense, but it's, I would say, basically always conceptually rich, um, conceptually alien and strange and new. Uh, so you're not going to be like, oh, well, I could have got that anywhere. It's one thing you, you know, with perfectly good adventures from all kinds of people, both third party and say TSR, I'm thinking about more in terms of official D&D. &D. You read a good adventure, you're like, oh, I liked that. But there's some of it you're like, hmm, that's a bit bland. Oh, yeah, I could have, I'd rather it was like this. And this adventure does that job for you of making things unbland. That's part of why it may alienate some. But I think this, in terms of, Patrick Stewart and, and Scrap stuff, this is accessible. This is a lot like a normal adventure, uh, but where every single thing is heavy. Every single bit is worth the money. Uh, there's also just at the very end here, you've got, you know, getting out of there, um, stuff like you can find about the history if you speak with dead on stuff. The future should you fail is basically about the, the bifrozens of the crows taking over the world or whatever using uh, the knowledge they have gained from an evil book. And then there's an index. Um, this is how my party ended their adventures. They had gotten to the DCO. They explored around. Uh, they encountered the giant once and lost it. Um, they kept exploring. They had fun. They found the observatory. They didn't see everything by any means, but they, they'd seen a bunch of stuff. They were kind of split up in two parties eventually, where uh, the goblin and um, someone else, uh, I think the, the uh, Grung were on a magic carpet and they had spoken to the Nightmare Librarian. In fact, here's a relevant thing, they'd, like, like the magical effect I'd forgotten the witch, they met the witch. Uh, and most of them forgot, but the, um, the, the goblin didn't and was kind of communicating with the witch and the goblin and the warlock, in fact, went off and they were flying around and they went uh, to find the Nightmare Philosophy to help this um, this witch, uh, or rather this elven princess as they saw her. And they went and they encountered her sister, the Nightmare Librarian, and they ended up getting the book, but then kind of, then they had the ghost of the librarian being dragged along by the book and chasing them. At which point they also had the, the giant appear and start crawling up underneath. The rest of the party was meanwhile above exploring something as they realized that there was uh, a, a um, uh, their, their, their old enemies, the crows, had arrived basically with their zombies and things started going wrong again. Lights started going out, ambush happened, zombies poured out everywhere uh, and they're fighting on this big gear and uh, band for the, the chain that descends to the un, uh, the Underdark whilst the, the giant and the 
um, the ghosts are chasing them up, and I think the ghost ends up inside the giant at some point, but obviously that doesn't hurt the ghost particularly. Uh, and eventually, um, things are bad enough that the paladin, who has an iron flask with one, well, not one wish, two wishes left, but made the deal with the Afrit inside. This is from a, from a Nightwolf Inn fight, treasure find, made a deal with the Afrit inside uh, that he'd only use two wishes, and in exchange for the third wish being given over, uh, the Afrit would give him something you know give him extra information and that information is a book about the city of brass in tony huso's version of the city of brass which is great and i recommend and so you have this thing where he eventually says okay so we know our friends are down on the magic carpet we're going to sorry i even forgot what happened what happened with the giant before was that they'd managed to use a draft of dreams or something they managed to throw some in from a tony huso module the Wai and fall knocked the giant out and then rather than kill it, they didn't want to kill it, they left, they ran away. But this meant it, it communed with another plane, which brought back their old enemy. As it arrives coming up, old enemy, old friend, it's very confusing. It arrived up out of the the shaft you saw. And as things are going wrong with the crows and the, got, and the zombies and the, this thing coming up, it spits out Sendan, the Lord of Madness, the Slard Lord of Madness. And at this point, that is the final straw for the paladin who's like, the last experience with Sendan was kind of weird and difficult and everything's wrong. We have three or four different moving parts that could go wrong here. So he says to the Afrit, okay, my second and final wish, what I want is take me and my friends, all the people you can see and everyone on the carpet down below because he's like, well, I know they're flying up and we want to go back to Caramore. And so they do. But this means the witch goes as well. And the witch is able to grab the, the bag of holding from the goblin, jump off and turn invisible which means that the Nightmare Philosophy, the book that they have gone there, well, at least ended up going there for, has gone. Uh, and there is then a massive falling out among some of the PCs because, um, you know, they, they've escaped. But that, you think that's the thing about putting all the pieces on the table, all the things that the players have done through the course of an adventure uh, in this adventure. Plus, in my case, it's also a background, big, long-running campaign, uh, suddenly exploding into... A moment which is re resonant down the the months and years afterward in the campaign and this is an adventure that helped me do that in a way that very few adventures even good ones do uh, so i think this is for me one of the uh, the best osr adventures i think many people would agree i think it has those qualifications those criticisms i've offered but i would say on the whole uh, you're not going to go wrong by getting it uh, if if what you've heard today is the kind of setting and style you like Anyway, if you have played it or run it, tell me what you thought in the comments. Uh, and I guess here's a, we've done on Underdark theme stuff. What are your other favourite uh, Underdark theme stuff? And what are your other favourite disaster themed adventures? Tell me in the comments. Till next time.